I'm going to ask y'all to please ignore this angle. Normally, I would never record from an angle like this, but I literally have no time to record this so I can get it out by the time I said I would. On top of all that, my uh, smoke detector is going to be going off in the background. I keep forgetting to get batteries. Sorry, hopefully that's not too distracting. But with all that being said, welcome to Levita Rosa. I'm your host, Pinky, and today we'll be talking about Married at First Sight. So if you'd like to see more, then just stay tuned, like, comment, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into this video. Y'all, three hours? Really? Three hours? Three? Longer than a movie? Three. I just can't get over it. Like... And I'm so sorry if I miss something or, y'all, I don't care. I don't care that much to sit there for three hours watching this show, especially all at once. Like if I was spreading it out over like a whole week or something, maybe, but at once. So, y'all, I was half paying attention, especially towards the end. Like I'll just catch up on the wedding on that next episode. I'm sure they're going to replay everything they played in this episode anyway. Let's go ahead and start with Haley and Jacob. Haley is 28 she's a sales rep and um, she's very set in her single ways she's always a bridesmaid never a bride and so she hasn't been in a relationship since she was 21 and um, she said it was a very controlling relationship and at the end of it he got someone pregnant so that left her with trust issues when she told her friends that she was getting married at first sight they were very critical of asking her so many questions pretty much by the questions they were asking they were making it seem like she wasn't ready to get married so i was a little bit thrown off by that she seemed like she ain't ready to compromise and that's very important in marriage seems like she just wants everything to go her way or the highway and even her friends made it seem like she wasn't ready to get married. So Haley was matched up with Jacob, who is an IT programmer, and he is 38 and they have the biggest age gap. I don't know if this is the biggest in history, but definitely the biggest this season, a 10 year age gap. If you like it, I love it, but it can present problems. I hope that it does not. He would never really commit before, but now he's on the clock. Like, I guess his biological clock is ticking and he spends a lot of time alone. You could tell he spends a lot of time alone because he has created his own beach in his backyard, which is kind of cool and a little weird at the same time. Everybody kept calling this man weird, like from his own friends to people that met him, everybody kept calling him weird. We'll see just how weird this man gets during this season. So let's move on. So let's get into Brianna and Vincent. Brianna is 28 years old. She's an engineer and um, she is a natural. I love her beautiful natural hair. So pretty. She says she is slow to showing affection and she's very picky. This is editing pinky. I also wanted to add in. I was a little nervous about that slow to showing affection because I was like, please don't let this be another Karen and Miles situation. I can't take it. The traits that she's looking for in a mate is patient, attractive, financially aware. <laughs> if you're not financially, you know, successful and a go-getter but she definitely made it clear that she wants her partner to make more so hopefully hopefully the experts learn from their mistakes last season and actually match her with someone who makes more because i feel like that presents unnecessary problems if the girl says she wants to make more and she's making it seem like it's a deal breaker match her with somebody that makes more when she told her best friend that she was going to get married at first sight her friend was very supportive but it it made me wonder like well, is your family supportive? Like we didn't really get to see any of her family, if I'm not mistaken, um, a part of this whole process from the beginning. So hopefully she has some family that's supportive because that's a little bit concerning to me. Then we have Vincent who is 28 years old and an auto broker. Um, he said he has always had an aspiration for family and he said he doesn't have the best relationship with his parents and um, he really didn't have his father in his life. He said he wants to be a good father and husband. Um, he said his last relationship didn't work out because she didn't support his dreams and she didn't like the fact that he didn't have a degree. He had a dream of starting his own business. I, I'm assuming a car lot. It shows that he's really ambitious and he wants someone to share that life with him and he said he wants to be a provider and he seems like he wants to be a rock for his wife 
And so, you know, from what we hear and see from him so far, he seems like a Miles type. So, I, you know, I automatically he seems like someone that I would be rooting for. But we will get into his behavior later on. That makes me question that just a little bit. But so far, it seems like um, it seems like they will be a good match as long as he makes more money than her. Like it seems like, you know, everything else lines up. But if he doesn't make more money than her. I don't see her being as supportive as Pastor Cal tried to make it seem like she would. I don't know. We'll see. So let's move on to Eric in Virginia. Eric is 34 and he is an Air Force pilot. Now, this was the participant that had already been married before. He said that his military commitments and the fact that he had to travel all the time and that he was constantly away from his wife is what broke up his first marriage but he said that he doesn't want another divorce so he's wants to be completely invested in this next relationship you know whoever with whoever the expert set him up with so when he told his mother she was very apprehensive like she low-key was against it <laughs> and she said that they are very traditional and conservative and you know pretty much she just doesn't agree with this whole thing and later on in the show we saw that he said that he doesn't want someone that will just be hammering back shots back to back and meanwhile this is her at the bachelorette party okay and by her i'm talking about virginia who is 26 and a customer service specialist. Virginia is not ready to be married. I don't know why they chose her. She's still very childish and immature, it seems like. I mean, for you to get so drunk that you throw up. Yeah, especially not for somebody like, what's his name? Eric, Eric, he don't want that. Like he ready to settle down for real, for real. Why would y'all set Eric up with someone like Virginia? That doesn't make any sense. He's been married before. So he already knows like clearly what he wants in life. And it's definitely not going to be no party girl. He made that clear when he was talking to um, Jacob that he don't want nobody to turn up like that. So this was a terrible match and it feels like they did this one on purpose because this is a terrible matchup. Don't make no sense at all. She's been single for five years, but it's like, girl, you're 26 and you've been single for five years. You were a child the last time you were in a relationship, basically. You know what I'm saying? 21, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't really count to me uh, all the way, but okay. Um, she never really gets invested because she doesn't want to give a person that chance to leave her or break her heart. The main reason why is because her parents broke up and she's a child of divorce. And she said her mom has been married three times. Her dad is on his second wife. And she said her parents have just now got on good terms. She said out of her own mouth, she has attachment issues. And I was like, you think? She told her dad about her um, getting married at first sight. He was not happy about it. He doesn't agree with it. Uh, she said that they butt heads a lot, but he alluded to not coming because he was like, it's going to be on TV anyway, right? I was like, dang, you you really don't plan on coming, do you? They seem to have a little bit of dysfunctionalness going on with that family. So let's move on to Clara and Ryan. She's 27 and a flight attendant. She wants a confident man. She wants someone. She's very social and outgoing and very honest. So she needs somebody that's going to be able to handle her, basically. Clara just seems like she is going to want to run everything. Like, you know, if things don't go her way, she's going to have an attitude. Just based off of how she was handling this whole wedding situation. Um, I don't know. She was just very, like, intense. And it could just be nerves, but she was... A little bit overbearing even when it just came to the group of women it just seemed like she wanted to be in control and steer the whole conversation but Ryan seems like the type to as long as she's a pretty white woman he'll put up with it I'm sorry he just he just gives me that he gives me that Ryan who is 29 he is a project manager and when I first saw Ryan I'm just like this hair child this hair this hair he said he has sacrificed relationships for his career and 
he said he had great role models for love. I'm assuming he's talking about his parents. He said he grew up in a rural conservative area where he was very much so the minority. Out of a class of 700, there were 10 to 15 black kids. And so it just gave him a different way to see the world, a different way to see the world. Um, when I look at his parents, they look like at least one of them look like they're black, but they look like they could possibly be mixed. I'm just going to assume that he's black since he said he was one of the 10 to 15 black kids at his school. He's been in mainly interracial relationships. Also on the other special, he said that his type was like quirky, like Zoe Deschanel. So he definitely has a type. It's reminding me of the black bachelor. Really, he's biracial. His mother's white and, um, he put out this disclaimer and uh, he didn't really want to be judged for i guess picking a white woman which everybody pretty much assumed he's going to pick a white woman but he doesn't want people to think like that and it's like just stand in it if you like white women that you just want to date a white woman you just say it um but they don't want the backlash that comes with it they don't want you know the criticism that will come with it but if that's just how you feel it is what it is let's stop tap, tap dancing around it don't blame it on the fact that you come from a small town uh, where it was mostly white people and i'm sure you know to a certain degree that's true but you get older and you get to branch out and expand and choose to date who you would want to date you would have a bigger pool of people to date from and you chose who you chose so you know it, it is kind of odd that you would be a black man and you most likely would never choose a woman that looked like your mother but it is what it is i can't i'm, I'm not mad about it um i know some people probably feel away i don't really care that's your choice um at the end of the day, I would rather him be with someone that he wants to be with than some force him to be with someone that he doesn't and not treat her the best. That's all I have to say about him. Let's move on. Let's move on to Paige and Chris. <laughs> I feel like these two, they're going to be the fireworks. They're going to be the explosion. Paige is 26. She's an accountant and a realtor. She owns a home and currently rents it out and she wants a like-minded husband, someone who's about making money moves and, you know, financially sound decisions. She really wants to be married and have children. That's like her main goal in life. She even brought up the fact that she might have a honeymoon baby. I'm going to need for this not to become a trend <laughs> with this show. Like y'all should not be aiming or even playing around with the idea of having a honeymoon baby. Like you are marrying a stranger. You know nothing about this person. At least get to know the person for the eight weeks before y'all even discuss children. Like seriously. And it made me a little nervous because Chris was talking about kids with the other guys too. And er everybody in the group was just like, uh, no, we're just worried about meeting our wife. Why are you even bringing up kids? Anyway, so when she told her family they were very apprehensive and they were questioning her, she claims her only deal breaker is that he is a god fearing man and that he wants kids. Her cousin was just basically saying all of your exes fit that criteria. So clearly you have more than one deal breaker. And he was like, well, what about finances? What if you get with somebody that makes seven dollars an hour and she was like oh yeah that's a deal breaker too so it's like girl she acts like she has a solid idea of what she wants but i don't think she truly does you know what i'm saying i feel like she has like this romanticized view of what she thinks she wants in a husband but in actuality i don't know if she has any solid attributes that she wants in a husband chris is 27 and a finance manager and a restaurant owner. I saw some red flags with some other people on this cast, but no, no person gave me more than Chris. Chris is a walking red flag. <laughs> he is literally a walking red flag. Like, I feel like I can literally go down the list here and tell you so many things, so many reasons why Chris should not have been chosen. So clearly 
this is for TV. They knew Chris was going to be uh, controversial, to say the least, just based off of the way that he describes what he wants. I'm just going to go down the list anyway. Um, in this very demanding and shallow list he has for what he wants in a mate, he said he wants someone that doesn't just want him for his money. Someone intelligent, submissive, sexy, and good in bed slash a freak. That's 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 what he wants in a wife. In the past, he was an ordained minister, but he quit because they didn't make enough. And see, that turned me off because, first of all, I'm glad you didn't become a minister because that is not why you become a minister. You become a minister because God called you to become a minister. And two, and you would think his whole family is ministers. So you would think that he would have known that or somebody would have said that to him. I think he just likes to be seen. So maybe that's why he wanted to become a minister. I don't know. You know, you can have a job and be a pastor at the same time. Like there are plenty of pastors that do that. I feel like majority uh, do that. That said a lot to me about his character. Then he said he was homeless, living in a rental car for four months, and he worked hard to get to a six figure paycheck. So that is commendable that he went from being homeless to a six figure paycheck. And I believe he said that was like only two years ago. So that is a feat. I will say that. Um, but here's another major red flag. He was engaged twice before. The first time it didn't work out because he didn't have any money. The second time it didn't work out because there was no trust, bad communication, things of that nature. But then we found out later on that that was just three months ago. He was just engaged to somebody three months ago and y'all accepted him on this show. He should not be getting married to nobody within three months of being engaged, engaged to someone else. What? He said that they met in September, started their relationship in October. He proposed in February and then they broke up. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Whenever they all get together, when all the men get together, I, Chris really do rub everybody the wrong way. So overall, Chris is just coming off as like arrogant, self-absorbed, yet no self-awareness whatsoever very superficial and yeah he's rubbing everybody the wrong way so far so i can only imagine how it is going to be for him and uh what's her name Paige. i don't know how it's going to be for them because she seems like she has a very strong personality herself so it seemed like they might bump heads a little bit or maybe they might be right on, right on the same page because they low-key have some some of the same attributes so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I didn't write much about the bachelor party, um, but Chris showed up super late and he had a blow up doll, which was really weird to me. I guess he was just saying how he wasn't going to like interact with the dancers there. He was just going to have his blow up doll. But that is like really it's it was just odd. And Vincent right before he walked in he was talking crap about him like you getting on my nerves he ain't even show up and then as soon as he walk in the door he all up in his face i'm just like okay vincent that was a little fake and then vince was toe up by the way drunk just toe up he was talking to a dancer low-key flirting with her and i don't know if he said this out loud or he said this in somebody's ear but he was like he was trying to get some of that I was like, uh-uh, Vincent, this, what? You about to get married tomorrow. What are you talking about? And then he knew he was dead wrong because he was like, they're going to judge me for talking to her. Duh. It looks bad. Like, it looks bad. And uh, I don't know. Hopefully he was just drunk. And I had such high hopes for Vincent. That disappointed me so bad. I was just like, really? Really? He was like the main guy I'm rooting for. And you do that. <sighs> Hopefully that's not a reflection on his character. Um, but it's just not looking good. And then as far as the women's bachelorette party. I mean, it was just standard. The only thing is 
um, Virginia really stood out because she is the only one that got so drunk she threw up. I'm really not impressed with these couples. I'm kind of bored. I low-key didn't even have enough energy to talk about this after watching it for three hours. But hopefully this season is at least entertaining. Um, and maybe there'll be a couple of healthy couples to come out of this. We'll see. Y'all let me know what y'all think down below. I would love to hear your opinion. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Peace.